into the word of God. Father, we are so grateful for every preaching opportunity that is given to us, God, for we know that the preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that are perishing, but for those of us that are being saved, it is the power of God. So in this power, we ask that you'll speak through the lips of this, your servant. Father, in me, there is no perfection, Lord, I am. I am a wretch undone, but I have been a benefactor of your grace, and I'm grateful for it. So, Father, I ask that you'll hide me behind your cross, Lord, and only allow your voice to be heard as this word is being ministered. God, massage not just my heart, but the hearts of those that are to receive it, Lord, that they might not have itching ears, but receive the word of God in truth, power, clarity, and conviction. And when the preaching hour is spent, Gently nudge me, dear Lord, to let me know when I've said enough. And as I take my seat, dear Lord, you take all the honor, you take all the glory, and you take all the praise because you alone are worthy. We ask these things in the name of the risen Savior, who is Jesus Christ, our Lord. In his name we pray and give thanks. And all God's children said, amen. amen. I ain't a singer. I don't pretend to be, brother. I, I talk for a living, Brother Ivory. I ain't got no singing in me, but if y'all will help me sing. I had this in my heart all morning. It's usually reserved for the communion side. Freddie, you got me. You got me. Uh, and I'm grateful. Alas, and did my Savior bring, and did my soul bring Yeah. 
I took my daddy's wife on a ride in a convertible because I'm grown. Bought her a Slim Jim because earlier this year, toward the end of last year, I bought my mama a whole set of teeth because I'm grown. Tearing up Slim Jims and Fago in a convertible 
because we can do exactly what we want to do because we grown. And in doing what I want to do, let me say this, Deacon Anderson, there's some things being grown I also, I ain't going to do. And I say this in love and not in disrespect, but there are times when things are suggested, things are imposed, they go into one ear and right out the other. Right out the other because I'm in control of parts of my life. Those other things that I'm not in control of, I put in the hands of the Lord. And I say this in love. I can't let nobody lead me to a destination that I don't want to go to. That's the reason I'm invited a lot of places, but there are a few places that I show up. But if I go, I'm driving my own car. Because when I want to go, I'm leaving. <laughs> Stay with me, I'm going somewhere with you. But when you're riding with somebody else, you can't leave until they're ready to go. Stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. I ain't stuck nowhere. I'm saying. But in that salvation, I also have fixations. And some of y'all are wired like me. We've been talking over the last couple of weeks. I have certain passions that stay with me. And I'm the kind of person, we call that type A, that once I start an assignment, when I start a project, I ain't going to come up off of it until I get done with it. And I, I believe that there's at least one or two other folks in the church that are like that. Once you get obsessed with something, until it's satisfied to your liking, you ain't going to get off of that. That's called passion. And in the context of Passion Week in the religious sense, the word passion is not a fixation. The word passion in the Greek is derived from the word pasco, which means to suffer. And we don't all have the same passions. All of us don't have the same drives, but it is in the nature of a man. For some of us that have the same idiosyncratic predilections, we have things that are in us that make us more than what we may appear to be on the outside. But I've learned through the years, 23 years of preaching has taught me that everybody ain't wired the same way. This is just me. I can't preach for you, but ain't no way I'm going to walk into a sanctuary and not remember the journey that it took for me to get here. Uh, I, I know my testimony better than you do. I ain't been saved always. I've been some places. Some of y'all heard my name in the street. Some of y'all saw me some places, but that ain't the sum total of the story. There's some things that only me and Jesus will ever know. That's why while the choir sings certain songs, ain't nobody got to tell me to clap my hands because I've lived the experience of the lyrics of the song that said, if it had not been Helen Baylor, I might have wrote it, but I lived it if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. I don't know where I would be. That's a song to some. That's a testimony to me. I hear Brother Travis echoing sometimes out of the corner of my ear with Joel Lagan and the mighty cloud said, I am a living testimony. Can't nobody say it like you can because you were the one in the hospital with the tubes and the IVs. Can't nobody tell that testimony quite like you. So you got to forgive me. I shout a little bit different when the experience hits me a certain way. It's to that end. My passions run a little bit deeper because I understand that there is a desire in some people to do just a little bit more. And it is an obsession to a guy like me. Q Jesus, I understand how it is to not to be able to get up off of an assignment. And I remember reading about Jesus in Gethsemane. I preached about it a Friday in Lancaster. How he was just looking for somebody to be there with him. And I want you to understand that the closer saints of God that you get to your promise, the closer you get to God opening a door where you might not just be a blessing to yourself, but to other people, that's when the enemy starts doing what he does best. And for those of you that think that because you're saved that Satan ain't still present and walking, you got to keep walking and keep watching because he's always around. The scripture teaches us that there are times when 
you're going to be celebrated because we remember the triumphant entry. That was a week before this experience, but there comes a time when every one of our lives, even regardless, if we're saved, you can be saved and things will still dry up in your life. Nobody is singing Hosanna when you walk in. Friends turn their backs on you. People lie on you. Folks that you've helped through the years, they turn their back on you and you feel like you by yourself. Know that you ain't stuck in no situation if you still say Cue the thieves on the cross. Sermonic text. Give me five more minutes. The thief that was on the cross saying, if you be Christ, Save yourself and us. Three minutes. Can I give you, Sister Barnett, the theology of the thief? And don't take offense to this unless you need to. But both of the thieves on either side of Jesus were guilty of the same crime. Because they weren't named. But the Catholic Church gave them names. The Catholic Church named them Gestus and Didmus. They were not named in the scripture, but they were guilty of the same crime. Yeah. But if any of you grew up watching Sesame Street like I did, there weren't two people on the cross. There were three. Sesame Street said there's one of these things that just doesn't belong here. And that was Jesus in the middle. The thief said, we're here and you're here with us. I hear that you be the son of God. And if you're the son of God, don't just save yourself, but save us as well. They had the same crime. They had the same verdict. They had the same sentence. But one of them thieves felt like he didn't belong up there. And he looked at Jesus with indignation and said, if thou be, Save yourself. Have you ever had anybody come at you the wrong way for things that they were guilty of as well? Now, that's one of the things that irritates me. I ain't talking about Christians because Christians realize that we're all forgiven. But church folks irritate the life out of me, driving nails in your hands for the same sins that they committed. Y'all don't want to talk about it, but I'll preach my own testimony. Liquor ain't got invented in 2002. They've been drinking it. They ain't just been drinking it. They've been making it long before I ever came on the scene. Them boys ain't just start smoking weed, Deacon Brown. They've been growing it in the backyard. Y'all couldn't find the sunshine. Y'all would have heat lamps and make your own irrigation systems to grow it. Can I preach it like I feel? Getting on them young women, they in the hotels. Y'all was in the back seats of cars. The times ain't changed. Y'all would find the dirt road. That saved if you want to. Dirt roads will tell your story if you let them. Y'all forgot. I, I might live in the city, but I was raised in the country too. But you can. <laughs> when we're guilty of the same crime, you got to watch how you talk to some folks. Because all of us have been benefactors of the same kind of grace. And all I ask is just tell the truth. The theology of the thief says, if thou be, if thou be. But what was happening here is that Jesus was not being attacked by his character or his actions. Jesus' identity was being attacked. But what I like about Jesus is that the adversary had already tried this same trick before. It was in Matthew chapter 4 when the Bible says that Jesus was starting his ministry. The Bible says that Jesus had been fasting for 40 days. Here comes the adversary reading from the same script. Saying, if thou be the Son of God. And what I like about Jesus, he responded in a way that many of us have forgotten, but we all need to remember. Jesus didn't say anything out of the way. He said, it is written. Satan said, if thou be, Jesus said, it is 
written. I got to ask you something. When the enemy begins to attack your identity, don't answer for nobody else. Answer for you. Saints of God, do you even know who you are in the eyesight of God? Many of us try to be identified by the thing that God has delivered us from. That's why when I came into the pulpit, you got to be reminded you are not the sum total of what you used to do. This old saint said you have been redeemed and bought with a Christ. First Corinthians said for in chapter uh, in first Corinthians 15, it says you are not your own, but the blood of Jesus has redeemed you and bought you with a price. The truth of the matter is that you're not the worst of what you've been through. You fought through every enemy, every devil that the enemy has sent you. You never really fit in this because that is God's way of letting you know that you are not like everybody else. You have to understand that there are times when you just spend time with you. That's when you begin to understand understand what your identity really is. You built yourself up to say, I can do all things, but I can only do all things through Christ. How does the identity work? That's why I'm here this morning. The Bible teaches us that we got to learn how to minister to ourselves. Because the thieves will tell you that you belong here because you're with them. But the power of who you are says that I've got the ability to get off this cross whenever I want to because I ain't stopped. And I'm saying, here it is where the enemy has to try to discourage. And you got to remind yourself of the simple precepts of the gospel. And sometimes you got to have the discipline of spending time with yourself, building your own self up. Telling yourselves that Philippians 4 and 13 is true. That I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. You got to tell yourself that regardless of where I might be right now. Even though I might not have but $6.45 in my account. I'm still seated in heavenly places. That I'm still a child of the most high God. And when the enemy says to you. If thou be, drop your voice an octave and shout back at it. I know who I am. Gave you the theology of the thief, the theology of the identity. But can I tell you what it feels like to be thirsty? It's here in the same passage that the gospel tells the story of Jesus meeting a woman at the well. And he said to her that if you come to this well again, you're going to get thirsty again. But if you drink the water that I give you, You'll have everlasting life. On this same cross that Jesus hung on, Jesus showed everybody there that his thirst, his drive was demonstrated because he was in charge. The Bible says that after this passage that Jesus opened up his mouth and shouted with a loud voice and said, I am thirsty. And I want you to understand, saints of God. That when you have the right kind of thirst, the same Jesus preached in the Gospels. He said, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And every now and again, you got to remind yourself that food and water can only satisfy you but for a short frame of time. But the Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And when you get the word down on the inside of you, you realize that whatever the enemy might throw at you, whatever he might assign to you as a title or an accusation, you have to say within yourself, I'm not stuck in any situation. I'm saved because I've got help on the inside of me. Anybody got the help from the presence of the Lord? On this same cross, it was there that Jesus said that no man can take my life. I lay it down but then I pick it up again. That's why he said that he gave up the ghost. But the Bible says that he was not stuck. He was in charge. I heard the old preacher say that the blood pressure of the moon got low and it began to turn into blood. The sun realized that it had no authority to shine when the radiance and the brilliance of the Son of God was resting on mankind. And the scripture says that the sun refused the sign. The Bible says that when Jesus took his last breath that the earth began to tremble and an earthquake broke out. And the Bible says that the dead which died began to walk the streets of Jerusalem. But Jesus dropped his head and said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And the Bible says that there was a great transformation.
generation that changed that death had no authority in the earth anymore. That's why Jesus can say, oh grave, where is thy victory? Oh death, where is thy sting? But what about, about my Savior? As the scripture says, that he didn't keep that power to himself. He said, this power I give unto you to be called sons and daughters of God. That's why it is that you understand that Jesus did die on Friday. But here's your shout cue that early on Sunday morning after he had been dead that three days, the Bible says that those Marys went looking for Jesus and the angel had to remind them, why see ye the living among the dead? I need to encourage somebody in here that because he lives, you can face every tomorrow. You ain't stuck. You gotta remind yourself. I'm saying I'm not broke. I'm not defeated. I'm a child of the Most High God. You have to tell yourself, regardless of what I might be facing, whatever the situation might be assigned to my hand, I'm not stuck. I'm sick. You got to remind yourself that the blood of Jesus encourages you. It keeps you day by day. It helps you to walk in heavenly places. You're not stuck. Up. You're safe. As a matter of fact, you missed the power of the experience. Jesus was never intending to stay in the grave for such a frame of time. It was so much so that he borrowed a grave to the point where he said, when I'm done with it, you can have it back. That's why I learned to realize that for every problem that I'm facing, for every situation might be assigned to me, I'm so glad, like Timothy Wright said, that my trouble I need you to help me preach it here this morning. Say it in your preaching voice. I'm not stuck. I'm sad. I don't know what you're going through. I want you to be encouraged, saints of God. Be not dismayed. If whatever be tied you, God will take care. I'm not stuck. I ain't stuck at nothing. I'm saved. I got every bit of power to get down if I want to. But too many people are counting on me to remain here. Because he came to be a redeemer for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But what I love about Jesus is that he brought salvation to the Jews and to the Gentiles alike. So much so that John 3, 16 is true. For God so loved the world. That includes you and me. I'm encouraged. Even in discouragement. I'm hopeful. Even in hopeless situations. I'm thankful. Even when there's sadness in me. Because I'm not stuck. I'm saying. I ain't stuck. I'm saying. All over this building, if you will. And I said this last Sunday. You stand with us. My. Thank you, son. I need this. There comes a time when you realize that. Thank you, baby. There are only things that you can do on your own in that experience. For any of you that have been to Barnville, Barnville is, they don't let on no ground down there. It's hilly. <laughs> and in my parents' house, we've got, we've got hills and dips. And that dip is where my daddy plants his gardens. Two major hills, one in the front yard, one in the back. And when it rains, all the water from both the hills goes into the garden. My mama was being lazy yesterday. Y'all don't realize this, but my mama does have, she got but one foot, but she still got two legs. <laughs> she can walk, but chooses when she wants to walk. So when we were going to the car, she sat down in her wheelchair and said, push me up this hill. <laughs> and I was like, mama. <laughs> As a mama, I can, we can do this two options. I said, or you, you could walk, or I could drive the car to you. She said, I know I won't. I want y'all to push me. As I see my sister 
pushing my mama up the wheelchair in a, on a hill through grass, mind you. I said, there's got to be a better way. Got to be a better way. And since I'm getting a little bit older now, I know my body. I ain't pushing her because my back would have been hurting this morning. I got the keys to the car. Drove it down. I said, Mama, let me help you. Getting up out of her chair, she said, give me a little bit of help. Grab me under the arm. Stay with me. Where's, where's the seat? She's feeling around. Help me find it. Didn't realize it. My mama was asking. She was asking for help. Really didn't need the help. It was because she wanted to be close to her children. She wanted, she wanted that affection. She wanted me to throw my arms around her and pick her up, even though she's capable of it. She wanted, she, she wanted the closeness. This morning, there, there are some of us in the house that think that we need a help that we really don't need. And at times, you go to the wrong source for the kind of help that you need. If you need to be embraced, just say that we got you. That's the beauty of the sanctuary. But there is an abiding need this morning on Resurrection Sunday morning. And if I can't allow me to wax pastoral, if you're here this morning and you are unsaved and you know that you're unsaved and you know that you're unsaved and it should Jesus return tomorrow, you know that heaven would not be your home. Don't go home the same way that you did. My simple prayer to you this morning is whosoever will let him come. The doors of this church are open. Come my letter, my Christian experience, a candidate for baptism. Come on, your watch there. Just come. Just come. Just come. If you desire prayer, the altar belongs to you.
about this last Sunday, could you imagine the mind of Jesus, all that was going on? One of his disciples, he had already told him, he said, you're going to betray me. In just a few short moments, one of you is going to go off and to uh, deny me three times. Uh, three of you are going to get scattered the moment everything happens. And then there's going to be a crucifixion and death. Everybody's going to come back to the cross. And the people that you would expect to be there were not there. I preached a sermon once called Missing in Action. You, you 
miss, think about all the people that Jesus impacted in his three years of ministry, and it was a Roman centurion that said, surely this was the Son of God. The question was, was where were the people, the multitudes, when Jesus fed the 5,000? Where were those that he healed along the way? Where were the blind men? Where were they? They were missing from the foot of the cross. <laughs> question this this morning is that all the Lord has done for you can you do this in remembrance of him so now ain't the time sit up let's pray together don't come to the altar with me let's pray together now ain't the time man. it's right here Every head is bowed and every eye is closed. Father, we thank you for thank you, Lord. the gift of salvation. Yes. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power, yes. for your grace and your mercy. Yes. Yes. We ask your master that as we receive this, God, you massage our hearts, God, and remind us of our obligation towards you, Lord. Yes. Father, to love our neighbors and our friends, God, to walk in peace, to follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Father, help us to be remindful of the sacrifice and the cost of the blood. For it had not been for the shed blood of Jesus, there would be no remission of our sins. We pause to say thank you. Help us to walk in that. It is our prayer. These things we ask and thanks we give. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Stand together. The Bible says in which Jesus, as disciples were to assemble together, took the bread, he blessed it, and he broke it. He said, take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. The Bible says, after the same manner, he took the cup and said, this is the New Testament in my blood. He said, drink all of it, let's drink the cup together. He said, you will not drink of the fruit of the vine again until you drink it new in my Father's kingdom. The Bible says, after that, they saw the heaven, they went out to the Mount of Olives. We went out to the Mount of Olives, and we're going into the book. We're going to the fellowship hall. <laughs> Where we have breakfast prepared. Y'all teach all another thing that you saw in the scriptures, but you probably never paid attention to. In John chapter 21, after Jesus was resurrected, the scripture says that the disciples were out fishing. And they weren't doing great, Sister Janice. Jesus said, do you have any fish? And they were like, no. Jesus sent them back out. He said... Here are the fishing coordinates you should go to. And they brought back fish. What Jesus did was he asked them, and they caught, according to the scripture, 150 fish. Jesus said, give me a few of them. Jesus had a meal prepared for them. They sat down together and they ate fish. If you've been to an A.M. church during Resurrected Weekend, they always have fish fries. Y'all pay attention to that? The reason that they eat fish is because Jesus cooked fish after the resurrection. Yeah. So this morning, we're going to have a little bit of fish. Yeah. In true Baptist fashion, we have a little bit of grits, a little bit of pork. <laughs> we to break bread together and, and just enjoy each other. The Sunday school program will start at what? What time? A little, little after nine? A yeah. little, little after nine? Nine fifteen. Nine fifteen. About 45 minutes to enjoy each other. I did not announce it because it's visible out front. Y'all, the van is here. The, the church van is here this morning. It is, it is here. It is here. It is here. And it is nice. Rides good. It is unlocked. But the keys ain't in it. Okay? It's unlocked. I want you to, I want you to see it. Uh, we're going to we're going to dedicate it at the conclusion of the ten o'clock service, and we we may have space to to drive it around the parking lot so y'all can get the feel of it. Uh, Trusty Freddie said I couldn't drive it unless I was on it by myself. So. <laughs> But God has, God has blessed us. Let's look to the Lord. Father, we thank you for everything that's been said and done in this sunrise service. Now, Lord, as we go to break bread one with another, we ask for your presence to go with us. 
We ask, Heavenly Master God, that you would give us grace and comfort for those that might be departed. God, allow the word and the worship to keep us throughout the day and until we're able to assemble together again. For those of us that are remaining in worship, we pray that your presence would abide with us and go with us. This is our prayer. Father, for the food that has been prepared, we ask your master that you would bless the hands that have prepared it and the bodies that are to receive it. These things we ask and things we give. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Finally, Lord, my prayers and the peace of God that passes all understanding. Yeah. We keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Let's all say amen. 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 amen.